Hello, welcome to episode 5. Basically there was a technical blip and I don't have any visual recording for this week. But I did have the audio version. I thought it was too good. I actually enjoyed doing it. So I don't have to re-record it. So there's just going to be no video this week. But it will be back next week. So please enjoy. Thank you. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Distraction with me, Zach. Um, fifth week in a row. I'm pretty happy about that. Thank you for coming back. Uh, and if you've been watching and liking the other videos, it does genuinely give me happiness. So thank you for that. Um, this week we I'm going to do the normal uh, route of the three three stages of the podcast where normally it's stories from the week, then I have a few recommendations of things I've been watching from the week, and then I try to do a big topic, um, which hopefully in the future will start to become guests, but right now it's just something cool that I found throughout the week. This week I've decided to do music and poetry, um, because I think that's something a lot of people have been... Uh, doing in lockdown, maybe expanding the horizons with music. There's been lots of things on Instagram going around, like what's your favourite album or what's your favourite song or song of the day. People do like 30 songs. I've seen lots of people doing that, so I thought it might be something good. Um, so I'm going to do a quick 10 minutes on like recommendations and then, yeah, probably going to go straight into music. First, I normally do stories from the week and as we're getting further and further into this lockdown, um, there's been less and less stories because less and less things happen every week. I actually keep a diary uh I've, not not normally i've started keeping an isolation diary of like because i didn't want to forget what happened during isolation in case it all blended into one but the problem with that is everything's just blending into one <laughs> um everything i'm doing every day is near enough the same apart from like the film sort of switch or what i listen to when i'm on my walks switch up things like that um but i think that's near enough the same for everyone unless like you're working sort of thing but yeah so i don't have many stories the only thing i really think of this week is i was on my walk and I was thinking to myself, I was like, wow, can't wait to like get back out into the world, can't wait to um, sort of start speaking to people again, like I miss being around people, being in pubs, being in restaurants, like even just shopping with like loads and loads of people, I just loved it so much. And then uh, I was walking, I was probably a few metres away from someone, but on the other side of the road, and that will make sense when I explain in a second. So I'm on the other side of the road, but I would be, like, say, two metres behind them. And as I'm having this thought, I'm just walking down, this is my podcast, and then this guy just turns around and without covering his mouth or anything, just sneezes into, like, the air. And basically, if I was on that side of the road, he would have literally sneezed into my face. Um, and I was like, that rang. Um, so Loki pissed me off. I was like, what the fuck? Um, and then he did it like two seconds again later, so I just like sped up walking to try and get out the vicinity, <laughs> which might have just been germaphobe, but that just made me be like, I hate humans and everything to do with humanity, and I never want to leave this lockdown. Um, <laughs> that's the only funny story from the week, but no, I definitely want to get out. Um, I'm recording this on Thursday instead of Wednesday because I didn't get a chance to yesterday, which is funny because I'm not doing anything, I was just watching movies. Uh, and I think they've announced like it's three more weeks, so that's pretty fun. Can't wait for that. Um, I was first time with my friend last night, and she said that it's like an extra three weeks. I think that takes us to like March, uh, sorry, May seventh. Um, so that's fun. Hopefully, we can still get somewhat of a um, summer. But yeah, I've got a. The only thing I've got to entertain me at the minute, I've got a tent that gets put up in sixty seconds. Apparently, like apparently it's a really quick thingy tent that you can just put up. So I'm gonna try and do that one day. Look out on my. Uh, Instagram, like put that on my story, try to put it up in 60 seconds, I think that'd be pretty funny. But yeah, that is the stories from the week, sorry there's nothing, but nothing's really going on, which I think is the same for everybody. So my recommendations for this week is that there, I've decided on, I've watched, I've watched a lot of Scrubs, Simpsons, um, they're like my big ones at the minute that I'm watching every day. Uh, interjecting that with just other podcasts and like YouTube but the three main things I watched this week were two documentaries on rock climbing and a film um, from the Criterion Collection called The Tree of Life uh, I know lots of people obviously might not be into rock climbing but I definitely give them a watch I'm going to talk about them both together because obviously they're very similar they're called The Dorm Wall from 2017 and Free Solo from 2019 and I watched Free Solo then Dorm Wall but the one of the people, the the star, if you will, from the dorm wall is actually in Free Solo, helping the guy who's in that. So if you were going to watch them, I'd put them in that sort of um, 
harder. So I think, um, mm, I'm really aware of that at the minute. It's really annoying me, so sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the dorm wall is about a man, um, who basically there's a big, big, massive cliff face, rock face in Yosemite Park, um, in California. Uh, and basically there's El Capitan is this big rock face and there's several routes you can take up it. It's about 3,000 to 3,500 feet tall. There's different rock climbing routes that you can take up it. Um, and the in the dorm wall, this is about a man, I can't quite remember his name, which is annoying because I watched it a few days ago. But he basically... I don't want to give any spoilers, but something happens towards the begin uh, in the beginning of his life. Um, there's a big trauma. It's really, really interesting. Very big trauma happens that um, it's sort of I like, I don't want to spoil it because you'll go through, and then that sort of affects his relationships. Um, so then later on in life, he oh this isn't spoiler. Basically, at some point in his life, he divorces his wife. Um, but obviously it's not like a movie, so it's just a documentary. And because of this, because he divorces his wife, he decides to tackle the dorm wall, which is a face of the rock, um, which when the sun rises in the morning, it's the first piece of... Um, it's the first bit of rock to get sunlight, so it's called the dorm wall. And no one's ever climbed it. Uh, the route that, So he designs a route to climb it to take his mind off his divorce. Um, so that's the dorm wall. Then there's Free Solo, which is about a man who pretty comfortable in himself he has a girlfriend um and basically he decides to climb a different face of el capitan but he does it without a rope so in the dorm wall they have ropes and tents and it takes him around 15 days and in free solo he climbs 3,000 feet in a, um in within a day sort of thing um so they're the two major differences one's over like two weeks uh and takes fifth and in uses ropes, whereas free solo doesn't use any ropes and he climbs thirty two hundred feet, two hundred feet more than the other guys. But the problem is they're both very, very difficult and probably two feats of mankind. Feats of the sport and everything, but in completely separate ways. Like they'll both go down as um heroes of the sport. Uh, and basically the guy who does the Dawn Wall challenge then helps the guy do free solo. Um, but the differences between them is, obviously, in the dorm wall, he does it with a partner, um, and it's all very much about companionship, and it's about his journey with the wall. Whereas in Free Solo, it's very much about mind and body, and even he has, like, a team that helps f um, film it. Ooh, sorry. He has a team that helps film it, um, like, with the dorm wall, but the problem is that he doesn't like to see them. He doesn't like to think they're there. Normally, when he does his free climbs, he does it without telling anyone, so if he does fall and die... Um, like, he hasn't got that on his mind because people will find him, but, like, they're not sat at home worrying about him because they don't know he's doing it. Don't really want to say much more about them because they're really fascinating documentaries. I think they're both about an hour 40 apiece. But you're like, how oh, can you do, like, two, almost two hours on rock climbing? But genuinely, they're absolutely fantastic. Really, really interesting. Free solos on Disney+, Plus and The Dawn Wall is on Netflix. So definitely go and give those uh, a watch and listen. They're so, so good. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about is The Tree of Life. So this is a film, I can't quite remember who the director is, um, but it came out in 2011. Actually, I think I have the box here, one moment. Um, it came out... Oh, that's not very professional. It came out in 2011, it's by Terence Malick. Um, and I haven't actually seen any of his other films, but I got it. If you don't know what the Criterion Collection is, it's a company that um again sorry about that it's a company that upgrades like old films shot on film and it puts them into blu-ray so it's done it with all of wes anderson's films it does it with like kubrick's films things like that it upscales them and makes them like um blu-ray 4k so this is a tree of life and basically it's the story of well, it's the tree of life, and it's told through the eyes of a family from, I think, around the 1950s, and then when one of the sons is grown up in around 2010, um, and it goes through all the stages of life, which I didn't quite realise. I watched it, and you get very immersed. It's a very cinematic film. Um, it's very much, there's not actually that much dialogue. There's probably a few pages of the dialogue in the whole two and a half hours of the film, but it's absolutely amazing. Um, 
and I understood afterwards when I went through, you know, you can like go through scene select and you can click, oh, I was on scene three. You go through them and they're all titled the stage of life that he meant from that particular time in the movie. Um, so he goes through um, birth, not like, it's not like he films a birth at the beginning of Monty Python, but it does like birth, death, mother, father, um, trust, loyalness, evolution religion and he does it all in the space of a movie and it all flows together um and like you can sort of pick apart each one and it, like the bit about evolution's a bit 2001 space odyssey when it's like going through the stars um it's starring brad pitt and what's she called oh Je- jessica chastain um it stars them too and i had no idea that they were in i didn't think any I didn't realise it came out in 2011 when I got it. I thought it came out in, like, maybe the 90s or earlier, so I was expecting a really, really old film, but it's actually really modern with, like, quite known, well-known actors. Um, <laughs> so, and it's by Fox Search, like, who do lots of really good films. Most recently, they did Jojo Rabbit, but it's a really, really good film. I'm not sure if it's on anything. I had to get the Blu-ray, um, which was a bit pricey, but if you ever... I mean, if you listen to this, you know me. If you ever want to borrow it, just let me know. Or if you ever find out anything to rent, it's really, really good film. Um, and it just, it's a film I'd describe as, is if you were watching, like, you know, like moving out on Netflix of an opera. That's what it feels like. I feel like the story could only have been told through um, cinema. Like, I don't think the story could have been told through any other medium of art basically i think it's absolutely astounding and i'd recommend it to absolutely anybody oh 11 11 i just checked there that's pretty sick (laughs) um so that's just my recommendations of funny stories from the week two documentaries and a film next week i am actually reading a few books at the minute so i'll probably be recommending some of those next week and i'm watching some films from jock to um which is a french director from like the 1960s to 80s so i'll probably talk about some of them next week if anyone's interested in that but this week uh, it's talking about music and poetry and not really poetry i've only got one because i've recently bought a book it's called the poetry pharmacy uh, by william seigart seigart and one of my friends um I, I know my friend quite well and then his wife who i'm also friends with does a poem a day on instagram like she reads a poem every day and she reads them one of the, a few of them from the book the poetry pharmacy it's really interesting um and it's a, so each page shows different conditions. Um, so at the top of the page it says condition, uh, news overload, or insecurity, or emotional baggage, and then it gives you a short description um, of different research into the areas um, of what you've been feeling. Uh, and then it gives you a poem on the other side from someone. And the one I just wanted to read today, I thought was very, very helpful to the situation. This is conditioned feelings of unreality, which I feel like with the new normal get being set in from the lockdown and everything that we're all experiencing, I feel it's just a very good time to listen and talk about this sort of thing. So it's also suitable for apathy, boredom, messiness, purposefulness, need for self-care, which I think are all very important things in the um in the lockdown i feel like these are lots of things that go around instagram or talked about on podcasts like with russell brand but i'm just going to read through the page um that talks about self-care and i'm going to read of gravity of gravity and light by john burnside this isn't your thing i'm sorry but i found it really interesting many years ago i read an extraordinary book in which a woman visits one of the wisest men in india He tells her that an important reason that we are in the modern world have lost our sense of reality in connection with life is that we have lost the inclination to do menial tasks for ourselves, to wash our own laundry, to clean our own plates and to prepare food properly. These daily tasks, he tells her, are what gives us purpose and meaning. When the young visitor asks, but how can I go out and help the world? He responds, how can you help others when you don't even know how to help yourself? There's something essential and joyful about our domestic duties. They have a mediative quality which gives us space to think lightly without direction or the need to be immediately useful. Sometimes we need to turn our day-to-day brains off in order to connect with something deeper. It's no coincidence that most of us think of our best ideas when we're not trying. In the long run, menial tasks are also a great cure for directionlessness. There is a lot to be said for people today. Call, there's a lot to be said for people for what people call today self-care doing things to express intent of making yourself feel cared for you may not know where your life is going but you certainly know what will happen if you don't do your laundry or if you don't wash your hair 
and in that mundanity and repetitiveness, these tasks give you a rhythm, which what term becomes kind of structure, which ultimately gives you the ability to cope. With these tasks, some people of the oppressive... Sorry, I'm going to start that again. With these tasks, some of the oppressive weight of your choice is lifted. They are always there, always suggesting themselves. However lost you feel, try to carve out time to make your bed. In doing something so simple, you've actually begun to learn how to unca- untangle the complexities of life. Sorry if my dyslexia showed up there. I really do struggle to read and like read out loud. Um, but I thought that was very, very meaningful, especially in the times now when people are feeling meaningless and bored and like they've got nothing to do day in and day out. Um, but and this was obviously written, I don't even know how many years ago, uh, and I think it is an important importance that lots of us forget just doing menial tasks. Uh, and I have just enjoyed. I've been cleaning out my cupboards and going through. I've like found loads of cool stuff, like old comic books and things like that. Um, and I think just doing menial tasks, sitting and reading, doing your laundry, um, having a shower every day if you're not doing that sort of thing, really, really helps. Um, and I'll read the poem now, uh, and then I'll go on to music. So this is from Of Gravity and Light by John Burnside. What we need most, we learn from the menial tasks. The novice raking sand in Buddhist tes- texts are sweeping leaves, his hand chilled to the bone, while understanding hovers out of reach. The jangling inner folktale, chopping logs, poised at the dizzel, dizzy edge of transformation. And everything they do is gravity, swaying above the darkness of the well, to haul the bucket in, guiding the broom. Finding the body's kinship with the earth beneath their feet, the lattice of world where nothing turns or stands outside the hall. And when the light comes in and they carry on with what's at hand, the gravel path, the fire, knowing the soul is no more difficult than the water or the fig tree by the well that stood there for decades, barren and inert, till every ban- branch was answered in the stars. So that was by John Burnside, and I just thought that was absolutely amazing. Um, and really made me feel happy, which is what most of the things on this podcast is meant to be about. Everything is just meant to make you feel a bit happier and make everything feel less stressful and like you have got it. Um, so if you are feeling a bit stressed, just take every th- little thing, one thing at a time. Um, that's the only thing I feel like I could, could suggest. Um, but yeah, I hope that wasn't too cringy off people hated that, but I thought that was really interesting and really might be quite helpful. But... I'm going to go into music now. Sorry about that. I'm going to go into music, uh, and I'm going to split it into three sections. I'm going to go what I've been listening to, what I'd really recommend that I've been loving. Oh, sorry. And I've been, like, <laughs> helping me uh, during the lockdown. And I'm going to go on some... I put on my Instagram a few days ago some recommendations from people, uh, and I got, like, eight responses, three I hadn't ever heard before, and then a few of them I'd already had in my throwback section, so... Every week, um, every week, every day or every other day, I've tried to do a thing where I listen to a um, throwback album or I try to listen to a, oh, what's the word? I'm being so dumb. I try to think of a, like a classic album. I try to put an album on that I know well and I can sing along to and it just sort of lifts my spirits every day. Normally this is while I'm on my walk before and after I listen to a podcast. Um, so I have like five or six different throwback albums as well to talk about that lots of people suggested but are already on my uh they were already on my list. Oh, I feel like I talk too quickly. Sorry if I do talk too quickly. So the first one is what I'm listening to at the minute. So just come out. Um, I've been listening to years. Beans on toast. You'll have heard me talk about him. And he did a live stream on last Sunday. Um, and he did. Funnily enough, he actually did a song. He's wrote a song about the album of the day. And in his house, they pick an album. They listen through it all day, whether it's classic or brand new. And it's with his new daughter. Um, so I'm clearly not the only one doing it. Even people like him have been doing it, which I was actually quite shocked by. And I did record the song because it was like it's meant to be coming out on his new album, but he played it on the live stream, and I recorded it on my phone. So I might put it at the end of this, but I'm not sure how good the quality is. So I'm not sure. But he's recently brought out a live album, which is only available on his website. So I don't know how many people would be willing to pay for it to listen to it. But you can go on Spotify and listen to any of his other music. But one of the reasons I love his music is when I've been to his gigs and the story he tells around the songs and why the song- songs are the way they are. Um, and that the live album is just filled with different stories and jokes he tells normally along at his gigs. Uh, and I absolutely love that. I think that's absolutely great. So I've been listening to the Beans and Toast live album at the minute and any live music makes you feel like you're out the house, like you're actually 
uh, socialising with people. So <laughs> I suppose if you want anything like that, maybe stick on a live album. It really gives you a, di- a different depth of listening. Uh, and similar to that, I didn't actually write it down. I've got another one of his albums, but I'd say Bleacher's Live Lounge that's also on Spotify. Um, and the thing with Bleachers is the main guy, I don't really know his name, but the main guy who sings, uh, basically every time he does an album, he can sing the same song six times in a row, whether it's on the album, a live version or acoustic, and it sounds completely different every single time. I know songs sound different for normal and acoustic, but his like almost completely different melodies, the only thing that's the same is the words. Sorry. Um... And it's like absolutely astounding. And one of his best ever albums, I think, is the live lounge. And again, you have people cheering the little stories and jokes he tells along the way. So it's really, really good. So I'd recommend that. The next one is more if you listen to... Um, um, again, sorry. If you listen to country music. I've only listened to... It's called John Prine. I'm sure lots of people know about him. He recently died and is in recently, like, within the last two weeks from the coronavirus or symptoms to do with the coronavirus but i'd found him about probably days before he died when uh, a musician i followed uh, tweeted one of his songs and i just happened to go on spotify and listen to it and then i've been listening to a few of his songs and enjoying it and then beans on toast in his live stream suggested the album souvenirs so i've been listening to that album because it's a very good way to get into his music uh and the reason i like it it's just very heartwarming it's quite um funny it's uplifting it's very light you can listen to it i often listen to it on a morning just when i'm doing like my morning tasks which for me is animal crossing collecting all my fruit things like that um but that's the album souvenirs by john prine and the song i'd recommend off that is fish and whistle i absolutely love it it's in like my like zach cool dude playlist of all the songs i listen to um like in the shower and things like that just my top hits playlist and it's absolutely fantastic i uh, you should listen to more um, country music. I don't think I listen to enough, but he's definitely a very good one to get in with. I've been enjoying him for about a fortnight now. Absolutely class. Uh, and he's part of, like, uh, I listen to, like, classics sort of thing when I'm on my walk, so I try and put a classic album on. Very similar to the next one, which is Meatloaf, uh, Bat Out of Hell, which I'm sure everyone... I don't even need, even need to talk about it. Like, everyone will be... Um, familiar with it but i think it's an absolutely fantastic album i love meatloaf i first started listening to them with barney barney used to always put the songs on and i wasn't normally a fan because i i didn't have an attention span so i wanted like quick pop songs that i could just like get the melody of and sing along to but then when you really start to get into it and i started to like the dramatics and the thea- theatrical aspects to their music and how long the songs are and the music videos that go along with it are just absolutely amazing i think i'm going to do a week on music videos it's going to be mainly meatloaf because they are absolutely class um but obviously the song from that that i think is fantastic who i first found when my friend put it on a playlist that she, she made for me was paradise by the dashboard light uh fantastic song I listen to it all the time i always put it on the on in the car with barney um but yeah like absolutely fantastic that's the song i'd recommend from that and then anything apart from that obviously on battle of hell 2 or whatever the second album's called um i've got it wrote down i'm not I'm not that much of a fan, a fake fan, um, but I think the best song ever by Meatloaf is I'd Do Anything For Love, uh, and the music video that goes along with it, uh, very fi- not famously, famously between me and Barney, I hated that song because he played it so, so much, um, absolutely despised it every time he put it on, but now I absolutely love it, I think it's class, the music video is amazing, the song is amazing, the theatrics of it is fantastic, I not listen to Meatloaf, fucking great. Um, next is Wallows. I haven't really listened to Wallows before. I'm not sure if like they're an indie band, like famous sort of thing. I don't really know if people listen to them that much. Um, but yeah, it's Wallows, and it's the spring EP I've been listening to. When I was actually going on walks around, like a, a field just near to me, and I was going like my daily exercise. Um, because I found that through a song called 1980s horror film, and any song with the title is about films that I listen to. I have a playlist all about different like songs about films. Uh, there's one from AGR about The Office, anything to do with TV or film, sorry, uh, is on there. So I found 1980s horror films, two versions of it, one on the Spring EP and then one that they've done a bit more techno. And I love absolutely both of them, but the Spring EP, all the songs on that, I think it's like six songs, is really, really good. When you're walking around in nature, it really does, you just feel connected to it. That's, 
yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. But it was absolutely fantastic. That's Wallows. I'm going to link everything in the description if I didn't say that at the beginning um, as well. Because obviously you're not going to remember all of this. But I'll link everything, all the different albums. The next one is Nora and the Whale. Um, and I love all the stuff by Nora and the Whale. I've been listening to them for years. Um, and I first got... Because I used to... Like, the most famous song they do that most people know is Five Years Time. Um... And I started listening to that with my friend Aaron one day. It's one of the best memories I have of when we were having a weekend away in the lakes and we were both sat on these like air mattress things and we were singing Five Years' Time. So then when I first got my um, vinyl player, the, one of the first vinyls I got was Peaceful, The World Lays Me Down, which is, is it the third album by Nor on the Whale. Um, and I'd listened to that on repeat for like months and months in my first year uh, at university and I absolutely love it, I still listen to it to this day and it's just one of my always go-to albums on a night to fall asleep to because I just love the stories uh, and the orchestra and all the strings and just everything that that music accomplishes I think is absolutely fantastic so I definitely recommend Run the Well. The next three I'm going to throw in are the recommendations from Instagram so I got Junk Food by Easy Life, Sixteen Oceans by Fortet, and Don't Judge by Dua Lipa. So Junk Food by Easy Life is the only one of these three that I've actually listened to because I only looked like just before I started recording the podcast. Um, but Junk Food I got first, like the day before, but then I woke up the next day and found the others. But I listened to Junk Food by Easy Life, and it was I'd, like my friend... Um, I sent it like uh, recommended it. I don't know if he recommended it because he loved it or he thought I'd like it. But whichever one, he was absolutely spot on because it's a really really cool album. Uh, I absolutely love it. Like I listened to it a few times. I listened to it on my walk and I watched listened to it again last night when I was going to sleep. My favorite song off that is Earth. Um, absolutely class. Would recommend it and hopefully I'm gonna start listening to some of their other stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's Junk Food by Easy Life. I don't have much to say because I've only listened to that album, so I don't know much about them. Uh, the new other one's 16 Oceans and Don't Judge. Fortet, uh, I think it's a bit more techno. Never really listened to anything like that, but I'm going to give it a go. It's from one of the lads on my... Pardon me. From one of the lads on my uni course, um, and they listen to all that, and I always hear them talking about it. So I'm definitely going to give it a listen, because maybe I can join in on their conversations. And before we like, graduate, I will have them on a podcast to talk about something like that. So I'll definitely give that a listen and <laughs> come back to you. And Dua Lipa, she's done some absolute bops in the past, so I'm definitely going to give Don't Judge a go. Maybe on my walk today, I haven't been yet, might do that. Um, but finally is the throwbacks. So every, probably like every third day when I'm just doing menial tasks in my room, um, whether that be reading or doing my animal crossing, Oh, I've actually had some comics. Um, I found some Tintin comics that I might talk about one week in my um, cupboard. So I've been reading through them. And I always put like a throwback album on because throwback albums are just absolutely class. Um, oh my God, sorry. So to go through some of them that everyone will have listened to, but maybe you're just thinking like, oh, I really, really want to like listen to something, but I can't think of anything to watch, even though there's so, so much. So um, my iPad just died. So that's why I'm looking... On my phone, <laughs> lol. So here's some throwback albums, just in case you wanted something to listen to. So Night Visions by Imagine Dragons, 2012, the best year for music, and I refuse to believe otherwise. A uh, little tangent, the, one of the comedians, James Acaster, he's got a book coming out next year, because he was depressed in 2015. He bought like something like 500 albums that came out in 2015 and listened to them. And he's ended up writing a book about which one was best. Which I think is really, really interesting. On a chat show, someone one day was... Because he, he says that 2015 is the best year for music. And someone on a chat show was like, well, how how do you know this? And he went, well, if you buy 500 albums from a different year and write a book and come at me with a logical response to why your year is better than my year, I'll listen to you. And I think that was hilarious. But lots and lots of the throwback albums that I listen to are from 2012, and I don't really know why. But unless this isn't, I've just gone on a massive tangent. It's absolutely hilarious. But to my knowledge, Night Visions did. Everyone will have heard it. It's one of the best Imagine Dragons albums. I don't really like the new stuff, um, but all the original stuff I absolutely loved. So the song from that I'd recommend is On Top of the World. Everyone's heard it. Everyone will have listened to it in a... Um, everyone will have listened to it in a secondary school assembly. The next one, which was also recommended to me on Instagram, is Nation of Two by Vance Joy. Um, I don't know how much of a throwback is because I only found out about Vance Joy like two years ago. 
Um, but ever since I've loved everything he's ever done, and Nation of Two is a fantastic album. So that's Call If You Need Me is my favourite song off that from Vance Joy. But I'm just going to go through quick fire through these. A Guide to Love, Loss and Desperation or Anything Else by The Wombats. That was something else um, suggested to me on Instagram. Anything The Wombats I think is absolutely class. I absolutely love it. Um, but definitely recommend anything they've done. It really takes you back to know, your teenage days where you're like, woohoo. Um, and everything's like summer and you're loving life and we used to always have the wombats on the car um, so that's sort of why that re- makes me reminisce of those times so anything wombats it's definitely a bop to put on while you're like doing your laundry or washing up the next one I only listened to last year so I don't know how much it qualifies as a throwback but it's Bad Ideas by Tessa Violet which I think is probably a little bit less known um, by the general public um, by that like three out of the five people that listen to this uh, and I found her through, I listened to Dodie and it's her friend, but her album Bad Ideas is actually really, really class. And again, it makes you reminisce more of your teenage years, but more of the sad parts of teenage years and the loneliness and the heartbreak, but it does it in a really funky way. So I definitely recommend that. And the song I'd recommend that is Bored. Really, really class song. Then I have two more. One of them, which I think also came out in 2012, is My Head is an Animal by Of Monsters and Men. Uh, everyone will have heard like, What's the other film? I like Six Weeks. That's the one I recommend off it. But I can't. there's another song on there that everybody knows. I just can't remember the name of it. But they've been really famous for ages. Lots of their albums are really good, but that's just one I like to stick on. Um, again, more like folk pop, a bit like Mumford & Sons, a bit like Beans on Toast. Um, not No on, well, on the Will, yeah, fair enough. Then Judah and the Lion, they're all a few folk pop bands that I listen to. I think that's a very cool vibe um if you are into that thing there's a few i'll put them in the description but there are a few bands that are really really class at that sort of thing my voice keeps breaking as well and then the last one sorry second to last um strange desire by bleachers i talked about bleachers earlier so this should just be quick strange desire is the 2015 album uh and it's got re like every song on it is fantastic a bit like the Imagine dragons one it's like every single album you can go and not skip any of them uh, I think that was a trend on like Twitter recently where you put like four albums that you listen back to back and that's definitely one of mine. Introduced to me by Barney, so shout out to Barney. Uh, and the last one, I was going to put Examples, Bangers and Ballads on the list because I think that's the best name for an album in the world. I absolutely think it's class. But I don't think it's quality worth it to put that album on. Like I don't love every single song in it. But I do love every single song of his three albums from 2008 to like 2011. And the one I'm talking about is Playing in the Shadows. Um, but any of his music from around then, I think it's absolutely class. And I listened to a podcast with him recently. And one of the reasons I love him is because he does most of that. He does he writes all the songs himself. He works with artists to write all the melodies and the music himself. He now doesn't have a label and does it all by himself he lives in australia now um and he I, he wasn't ever going to release a new album but he started putting a few singles off on youtube which you should definitely go and watch one of them's really cute it's like him and his wife and his son all dancing in the living room and that's the music video for the song this before lockdown like he was just doing everything by himself where he talks about instead of making like 30 40 thousand pounds music videos he now does it in his own living room and like fans absolutely love it and he is actually meant to be bringing out a album by the end of the year he put on twitter the other day put like a little poll like should i release just singles or should i release my seventh album so hopefully we get the new album from example at the end of the year but all his songs are bops i think he's a really really cool guy and he puts his like actual heart and soul into it all so i think that's absolutely class uh and i'm i would absolutely suggest all of his music to anyone that would listen I'm talking about listening. If you've got to this part of the podcast, thank you very, very much. Um, I really enjoy doing it. uh, And I hope to see you next week, week six. I'm not sure what we're going to be talking about, but I'm sure it'll be pretty good. Thank you.